Tyrannosaurus, as we all know, were among the most formidable of all dinosaurs, with them existing for around 2.4 million years, and in that time leaving behind many remains, some of which are among the best preserved in the world, which has allowed this genus to not only be one of the best known dinosaurs, but out of all Mesozoic life. This has however brought up an interesting question that some have thought about before, but never really acted on outside of speculation, and that is, how many actually existed at once and or overall? Estimating the abundance of a species is a common practice and can reveal many aspects of their ecology, evolution and threat level, although doing the same for species that are extinct like Tyrannosaurus is a much trickier endeavour. For this study, led by Charles Marshall, the study used a relationship established between body size and population density, distribution, total biomass and species persistence for the genus, and in turn revealing previously hidden aspects of their population ecology. The work first started when Marshall held a Tyrannosaurus fossil, and thought to himself, how rare was this, was this bone a one in a million, billion or trillion, how rare really is this fossil? From this question, he and the students in his research group started using tools that biologists use for modern animals and then applying them to dinosaurs, with the crux of their calculations hinging on an observation that there were many more small animals than big ones due to their habitats and diet requirements, with the mathematical relationship involved being known as Demuth's Law, which correlates the average body mass of an animal with their expected population density. The study also solely evaluated post-juvenile animals, so the population would indeed be larger than the median figures presented, although since these are the animals that could reproduce, they are therefore more relevant to the evaluation. The first main thing to consider would be their metabolism, which has proven to be a heavily discussed field, with the general consensus on dinosaurs being no longer thought to be cold-blooded like many modern-day reptiles, although not as warm-blooded as mammals. Among living species, a slower metabolism is reflected in larger population densities, although ecological differences between species of the same trophic level, regardless of physiology, end up translating into a large scatter of differing densities, with carnivorous mammals in some cases having a 150-fold variation in population compared to other species of the same body mass, which in many ways can be down to other factors like habitats, competition or prey availability. This ecological scatter therefore swamps the uncertainty of the already relatively unknown physiology of Tyrannosaurus, although for this paper, the energetic considerations do suggest that dinosaurs, at least in the case of Tyrannosaurus, were mesothermic, and that the extreme size of these Sariscian dinosaurs would be best explained if they had a metabolism similar to that of large varanid lizards like Komodo dragons, which used 22% as much energy per unit of mass, Although since many paleobiologists tend to favour a more energetic physiology, the study therefore assumed a physiology in between that of mammalian carnivores and Komodo dragons, which translated into population densities 2.1 times as large as those of the average mammalian carnivores, and 1.5 times the size of the population densities of large varanids for the same body mass. In another contrast, mammalian herbivores average 35-fold higher population densities than those of carnivorous ones, and reptiles have on average a 30-fold higher population density than those of mammals for the same body mass, with the study analysing a range of different metabolisms, even ones that are much less likely like Tyrannosaurus having a higher metabolism than mammals, to better gauge and calibrate the data. Using the relationship between population density and body mass among living species, combined with the substantial knowledge of post-juvenile Tyrannosaurus, was then used to calculate the potential population variables and preservation rates for them, with the study finding that their population density was between 0.00058s and 0.14 individuals per kilometre squared, which for a comparison is larger than that of tigers and smaller than that of lions. Then, to calculate the standing population size of Tyrannosaurus, the population density was then multiplied by their estimated geographic range, accounting for where fossils have been found as well as inferring from their ecological niche, with the study estimating their geographic range at around 2.3 million kilometres squared. There is however uncertainty as to where their range fully extended, as since all of their fossils have been found on the west coast of the US and in Canada, whether they lived in other places with similar climates at the time, like Alaska or the east coast, is still unknown. 
from then multiplying the plausible population densities by their estimated geographic range. The study yielded an average population size of 20,000 individuals, with a minimum of 1,300 and a maximum of 328,000 also being found. Based on this particular population and population density, it was estimated that an area the size of California could support 3,800 adult T-Rex, and only two in an area the size of Washington, D.C. Another interesting aspect of the study was that it looks at the total number of T-Rex that ever lived, with the study dividing their estimated temporal range by their generation time to then multiply their standing population size and the former figure. The study found that Tyrannosaurus would have existed a total of 2.4 million years, matching up well with the earliest and latest fossils found, with the generation time being calculated using the proportion of individuals living to a given mean year, their survivorship and the average number of offspring produced, which also required an estimate of the onsets of sexual maturity and their maximum lifespan. The study found an estimate of an average age of 19 years and after the calculations were done, found that their persistence was around a mean 127,000 generations, with the total number that would have ever lived being 2.5 billion, which was found by multiplying the number of generations they persisted on based on their population size. The study also estimated that due to this potential maximum number of individuals that ever lived, they have had a fossil recovery rate of 1 per 80 million individuals for general localities, or 1 per 16,000 where their fossils are most abundant, like in the Hell Creek Formation. The study does have some deltas though over the data that was included, as since so much is still unknown about dinosaurs, the scientists involved themselves knew that their study wouldn't result in any single definitive answer, but that it would show and provide limits on what a plausible number might have been. The authors themselves also suggested that the estimates of 20,000 individuals was probably lower than what should be expected, especially factoring in that disease pandemics could easily wipe out a relatively small population, although other animals have proven that this does not always have to be the case. Dr. Makovicki, another paleontologist, stated that when comparing this population estimate to living predatory animals, he found that as there are less than 4,000 tigers left in the wild, and similarly 20,000 for lions, he stated that it doesn't sound like a big number, but that it actually wasn't that small. Although this statement doesn't take into account that these animals' modern populations are this way because of increased habitat destruction, fragmentation, poaching and loss of resources, something all down to us, an outside factor, with their populations being in some areas 90 through 95% smaller than what they once were just 100 years ago. The study also doesn't take into account the amount of juvenile animals present in the population estimates due to their likely occupation of a different niche than the beefier adults, and the population as a whole therefore would have been higher when accounting for this. Simultaneously, studies of living carnivores suggest that some predator populations are higher in density than others of similar weight such as jaguars and hyenas, which while being similar in size have vastly differing population densities, with hyenas having a density 50 times higher, which is down to their different habitats, prey and group dynamics. Their population could therefore be higher than what we know with the study having a 97.5% probability that based off our current understandings of their growth, anatomy and range, their maximum population of 328,000 could have been closer to reality, given that lions just over 100 years ago had a population of well over 200,000, so a range of between 100,000 and 200,000 could also be likely for these animals. While there are still many unknowns that still need to be figured out, this new paper is a fine contribution to the catalogue of papers made on this most famous of dinosaurs, and opens the door to more such population studies on other, lesser known prehistoric animals and what this could mean for the ones living today. All in all, I thank you for watching this video on these animals, and that you may have learned something new. If you would like to see more from this channel, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And with that, I'll see you next time, whenever that's may be.